Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're cracking on with our combined arms series and looking at naval vessels. Today we're looking at the Cravat class frigate. I've joined, joined today by my naval buddy uh, Daishi. Say hello Daishi. Hello. Right, so we're going to crack on the vessel. The particular hull that we get, I'm going to scroll down here, is this one here, the Rezki otherwise known as Sharp. So we'll look at the class first, because this isn't a big class split into several subclasses. So uh, first of all, the word frigate. So we go from Corvette, then the next size up is frigate, then the next side up, destroyer, then cruiser. So we've got the second up here. The Cravat class, Soviet designation, Project 1135 Storm Petrel, which is one of those. Uh, where a series of frigates and guard ships patrol boats built in the Soviet Union primarily for the Soviet Navy since 1970. Later, some sub-branch, like the Neri, was designed for coastal patrol by the KGB border troops. Until 1977, the class was considered as a big anti-submarine ship. These ships are commonly known by their NATO reporting class name of Krivak and are divided into Kravak 1, Kravak 2, Kravak 4, and Kravak 3 classes. They were designed as a successor to the Riga class. The design started in the late 50s and matured as an anti-submarine ship in the 1960s. The first ship was, sorry, can't pronounce, but that one there, and was commissioned in 1970. A total of 40 ships were built, 32 ships for the Soviet Navy, and 8 modified for the Nire uh, Kravak 3 subclasses for the KGB Maritime Border Guard. Currently, two vessels of the Nire subclass are in service with the FSB Coast Guard, and one is part of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian Navy. The ship's unique features, the bow missile box, which we'll look at in a bit, the stack and the angled mast, earned it a rap-like nickname among US sailors that comes from their foreign ship silhouette identification training. Hot dog pack, smokestack, guns in back, crivac. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> How many ships remain in active duty is uncertain. According to some Russian sources, it has four units in the Russian Navy and the Ukrainian one. Russian press listed three operational units in February 2008, with one in the Baltic Fleet and two in the Black Sea Fleet. The Indian Navy ordered six frigates of upgraded Kravak III classes as the Talwar class. Three ships were delivered 2003-2004, three more delivered 2011-2012. Uh, On October 12, 2010, it was announced that the Yantar shipyard in Kaliningrad had won a contract for construction of three new ships for the Russian Navy. The construction of the frigates of the Russian Navy will be carried out in parallel with the construction of the same type of frigates of the Indian Navy. So what we found out is these are early 70s. They, were, they would have been laid down. There was 40 in total, and they are more or less anti-submarine warfare ships and fleet protection ships so we're going to now look at the hulls so each one of these is a different uh, hull name so this is the name here this is the english conversion of the name this is where it was built this is when it was laid down you know the keel that was laid down this is when the ship was launched this is when the ship was commissioned and this was when it was decommissioned or still in active service almost all of these have been decommissioned so we've got the Krivkat, uh, the Krivak 1 series here and we've got one we believe active which is here uh, otherwise known as harmonious we've got the Krivak 2 series which is what we get in DCS is what we're interested we have this hull here the Rivsky otherwise known as sharp it was laid down in 1974 it was uh, active you know built uh, set sail in launched in 1976 and the same year it was put into service so it was a very quick turnaround really two years between lay down and into service uh, the pacific and it was decommissioned in 1995 uh, out of interest we've got some more Krivak 2 we've got one in service by the looks of things uh, where are we sorry try that again yep one in series of Krivak 2 which is the keen and two in service for Krivak 3. No, sorry, three in service, apparently, for the Krivak 3. One of them in the Ukrainian Navy. So that's that. Now, we're not really covering this, but just to you know that as well as the Krivak 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, there are the Talwa and the Grigorovich series. Uh, now, these are modern vessels that are all still active or even under construction. 
And these are built, uh, I don't know if you'd agree with this, Daishi, but built around the same chassis, but more modern, obviously, starting lay down in 1999 to lay down to 2013. Anything you want to add about the Talwar or the Admiral Grigorovich? Yeah, I don't have much about them, although I have seen that, like the uh, Taikon, the Taekwondo-Roga class that we covered. Modern. It uses the same hull as the, uh, the Spruance class destroyer. They just modified... Yes, modified it from the superstructure up and all that. Right, so yeah, these are modern ones. Right, okay, that's cool. So now let's go and have a look at some production numbers class overview again. So it, it is the Krivak class and the Krivak 2 we're looking at. These are the various builders. These are the different operators through the years, preceded by the Riga class and has been succeeded by the Neustrashimi class. And we've actually done a video on that already. The Neustrashimi, a uh, smaller class, and the Admiral Gorskov class there, very modern looking. And the subclasses of the modern are the Talwa and the Grigorovich class. Planned 41. 40 of them were completed of the various sub-series. One was cancelled. And there are four active in Russia, apparently, and one active in Ukraine. 35 have been retired, cut up to create washing machines or whatever. And one has been preserved historically. Now, before we start going into the general characteristics, because there are so many of these, all covered by these general general statistics, we found these general statistics to be a bit inaccurate for our particular ship, the Redski. So what we've done is made our own, done our own research for that tip, particular ship. So we're going to jump over. It's not as pretty, but we're going to jump over now. Stand by. So the Redski, yard number 160, Yantar, Kaliningrad. Uh, what are these pen, pen, pen ends numbers? Do you know? From what I can gather, I think, they kind of change numbers, sort of like how uh, with uh, fighter divisions you have different numbers for the different fighters. Mm -hmm. It almost seemed like they did that as they moved between different fleets, they would get a different number. Right, so we think probably one of these whole numbers will probably be on this on our ship in DCS, but we don't know which at the moment. General stats, displacement, displacement metric ton assumed, standard to just under 3,000 tons and complete 3,300 tons, so pretty small compared to what we've been looking at so far. Length 123 metres, again pretty small. Width uh, 40.2 metres. Draft 4.5 metres. That's very low draft, isn't it? 4.5 metres, max down to 7.2 metres. Max speed is very good. I don't know if that's a derivative of the, of the draft or not, but 32 knots, along with the, one of the cruisers. That's the fastest ship we've looked at so far. Range during economic cruise is 4,000 nautical miles, which is pretty low compared to what some of them we've been looking at, like the Moskova was 12,000 miles, and a complement of 196 crew. Engines, two shafts. We had a combined gas MK7, so which is two MC2 two gas turbines, plus two MK8 gas turbines, okay. And we had a total of 46,000 shaft horsepower. Is that two screws, do you know? Yep, two shafts. Okay, we go on to sensors. Here's where it all starts getting a bit complicated. So we've got, first of all, um, and I'm um, assuming these are specific to the Revsky, we've got the MR310A Angara A uh, NATO head net air surface search radar, double-sided rotating radar. So this is something we're going to see on the top. This is, do we know if this is a 2D? Oh, yes, we see it's a 2D roll. It is a radar. It's air search. It's two-dimensional, so it's not 3D like the more modern um, noise trashimi. With a max range of 182 kilometers, about 100-ish miles, a bit more than 100 nautical miles. And a max altitude of 90,000 feet. Anything you want to add about that, the Angara? So is it only air, or is this surface as, this is surface as well? Air and surface search radar. Mm. Yep, both surface and air. So we're going to see this on top of an antenna tower spinning around, basically. That's what we're going to see. Okay, next we've got an NRS Don navigation radar, bar shaped. So this will be a small kind of thing that we'd see on a, you know, a civilian ship with a range of 50 miles, surface targets, 25 miles for aerial targets. And we've got a link there. Okay, NRS Musson Monsoon, question mark. A NATO eyeball, so they call it the eyeball. Uh, this is the radar, uh, the guidance for the SSN-14 Silex missiles. They're called Silex, they're anti-submarine missiles. We'll look at them in a bit more detail in a bit. But that's that. Anything you want to add about the uh, Mousson, Mousson eyeball? Yeah, I just typed in that monsoon because I think mm -hmm. that's what the name would be in uh, Russian. 
Roger, cool. Okay, so we'll have a look at that. The MR144 LEV214 fire control radar for the AK100, uh, which is, we think, is going to be a kite screech or a very similar uh, kind of contemporary to the kite screech, which will guide us in the noise to Shimi. And it's a uh, fire guidance for the AK100. That's the 100mm guns. So we'll look at that in a bit. We've got four R30, the 4R33 radar. NATO is pop group, and it's uh, guidance for the SA8 Gecko tracking radar upgraded to the SU-4R33A at some point. So this is the SAM guidance for the slow-range uh, Gecko missiles. There's another word for them that's not Gecko, but it doesn't come to me now. Uh, so the SAMs, but low-range, medium-range SAMs. Next we have the MG332T, Titan 2T active and passive hull sonar, NATO reporting name Bullnose. Is this for searching for submarines? Yep, it's got quite a few of them on this thing. <laughs> Roger, wicked, cool, okay. I mean, this is an anti-submarine vessel at the end of the day, primarily, so, yeah. An MG325 Vega active and passive sonar VDS, uh, known as a NATO reporting name Mertel. This is the object that's towed outside and behind the vessel, isn't it? Correct. So it's kind of like, almost like a kind of torpedo-shaped thing that's towed behind the vessel. And do you want to give us a quick overview of what that's used for? Um, that's used to get like a deeper, uh, deeper sonar image, like because you've got that uh, hot, hot, cold water barrier. It lets you get underneath and get a better sound. Mojo, so they can tow this thing behind and drop it down to to whatever depth they want to get better sonar returns. Okay, we've now we've now got the MG7 Braslit anti saboteur sonar. So this, right? So do we know what this is then? I think it's designed to pump out like just human audible sound and just like if you detect like someone trying to get underneath the hole and attack attaching charges, you would blast them with this thing. Oh wow, really? And what would it do? What does it actually what does it affect? I'm imagining it would probably be like putting a uh, giant sound speaker right in front of their face and mm -hmm. blasting it at eleven. Ah, oh, that's so cool. All right. If anyone's got more information on the MG7, that would be appreciated. That's quite cool. Okay, next we've got an MGS 400K hull sonar. It's active and passive search. Uh, NATO shark gill. Wow, there's so many different... Maybe may because of the shape of it or something. So yet another active slash passive way of searching for submarines. Anything else about that? I don't know much about this one. And I should say, none of this is particularly relevant. None of this sonar stuff is relevant to our DCS model. It, you know, that's not modelled. Submarines, uh, sonar, none of that's modelled. Maybe it will be one day. Probably not. Next, we've got an MI110R radiation wake, uh, or K-thermal wake, or KM thermal wake detectors. According to Reddit Post, these weren't that great. What's this all about? What these are designed to do is they try to either detect radiation from nuclear subs or mm. try to detect if their place is slightly warmer and be like, oh, there's probably a sub there. Right, and not yet another way of looking for uh, submarines then. Okay, interesting. We've got the MP401S Start S ECM suite has an RWR. Uh, like RWR like detection and active jamming. Right, so we've got the ability here to detect other radars, hostile radars, and to actively noise and whatnot jam. Okay, um, and we've got four PK-16 decoy launchers. Each has 16 barrels of chaff and flare. And that's a big thing I've learned about ships recently. They, they spit out chaff and flare just like aeroplanes. And that is going to be linked here to the, um, to the ECM uh, suite. Anything you want to add about the ECM suite or these decoys? I know sometimes they can be linked together to where, like, the operator on the ECM suite can deploy the decoys as needed. Don't know if this has that type of connection or not. Roger. Okay, and this is pretty early as well. 70s, I suppose, as well, isn't it? So, Okay, fine. Um, you've got some links there. Anything we need to look at that's, that's important in those links at the moment? Those are my sources that I used. Roger, that's fine. Good job. Next, armament. Everyone's favourite part. So his primary weapon is the one times four. So you've got one set of four URPK-4 metal missiles. NATO reporting name SS-N-14, otherwise known as Silex, anti-submarine munitions. And these are pretty cool things. Uh, 
You'd agree with that, wouldn't you? They are the Siluxes. Yep. Um, I got a picture of what yeah. this missile looks like. Yeah, send that when you can. And I've just got some other pictures from uh, Onslaught, so I'm going to quickly check them out. So what we've got is uh, this. It's actually a torpedo that's carried by a jet aircraft. If that sounds weird, then it is. It's all automated. Very Russian. So Russian. If you can see that there. Uh, here's a picture of them in their tubes at the front of... This is actually a different ship, but... Um, uh, here's the tubes, and those are the missile with the kind of aircraft on top. It tows the missile for up to about 40 miles in the air, drops the missile on a parachute, so it drops a torpedo on a parachute, torpedo hits the water and gets the sub, and that's how our torpedo can have 40 miles range. Uh, yeah, you, this is exactly it. So this little aircraft here carries our torpedo with its rocket boosters, drops it 40 miles away or so, this goes active, and uh, and chases the submarines. So it's an amazing piece of um, uh, machinery. Uh, so that's, the only thing I'm looking for is oh, you know what? We'll, in DCS, we'll, we'll look at those launchers. Anything you want to add to them at the moment? This the thing, the circumstance for this was is that uh, America recently around this time came up with their first Azerox, and this was the Russian response. Roger, gotcha. Okay, so 70 is Roger, yeah. Then we've got two times two OSA M SAMs firing 40 in total in the magazine 9M33. So that is a type of missile that the SA8 OSA fires, a Gecko missile. And um, there is two at a time. Are they arm launched? I think I. I've only been able to find pictures of them with the cover on. Roger. Well, go and have a look. I could be. I mean, this is the time in history when I think we were doing arm launches. So there'll be an arm, and two of these missiles will be on there at once. So we can fire a tour at once, and that arm could be recharged in a magazine of 40 of these total missiles. And they'll shoot down. Whether they shoot down hostile missiles remains to be seen, but I think that's the point of them. Um, and they can obviously shoot aircraft as well. So we'll have some investigating of that. The arm system was, of course, replaced by the vertical launch system. What, 80s, 80s, I think, around there? I think that's about the right time frame when they started doing that. Then we've got, probably my favourite bit today, is two times 100mm AK-100 cannons, guns going to be automatic radar guided guns which are going to be a bloody good laugh to use. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that in, in swivelable turrets. So we'll have that. We've got a range on these is about... 20 clicks something uh we've also got two times torpedo launches for a total of four torpedoes of the 553 mil type 53s i think uh tt so they're torpedoes that they're kind of weird they kind of just jump off the side of the ship uh we may be able to I'm just can see if we've got it in any of our pictures here uh, so that's them there i believe and they'll just kind of ping off the side of the ship and launch the torpedoes we have two times 12 RBU 6000 Smirch 2 anti submarine launchers. Do you want to quickly go through what they are? Uh, these are the same ones that we saw in the Neustra Shemi, the, uh, mm -hmm. the rings of uh, uh, death charges. Roger, so you can fire them out. Kind of somewhere between a mortar and a death charge, isn't it? It fires them out and yeah, gives us a bit more control or ability to toss them. Okay, and 18 mines. It's the first ship we've seen that's a mine layer as well. So would it just carry these and just drop them out the back of the ship? Yeah, I'm suspecting this is like probably anti-submarine mines of some sort. Mm -hmm. Roger. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, the ship was modernized 1984 to 88, which may or may not be shown in DTS. We're not sure. Yep. The first part's what they removed. The second part's what they put in. Right, so we're saying that they removed the four um, launchers at the front and the Muson radar and removed one times four, uh, I'm not sure what that is, one times four URK5, what was that? Uh, yep, that's uh, what they put in. Oh, that's what they put in, right. Oh, so they changed those missiles for these missiles, basically, and a different radar, right, gotcha. Uh, for what I can tell, Silex uses an old anti-ship missile as a delivery for torpedo using IR or data link guidance on top agreed to all of that. The Rustra B upgrade adds 185 shape charge to the missile portion. Some sources claim the torpedo used with the warhead in anti-ship mode. Uh, in anti-submarine warfare mode, it'll fly high and drop the torpedo with a parachute. Yep, we're gonna know that. 10 to 90 kilometers for anti-ship based on the SSN9 Siren at 0.9 Mach. Uh, flies low altitude, five to fifty kilometers. 
UMG T1 torpedo, 8 kilometers range at 40 knots. So this is the side launch torp um Is the UMG T1 the part of the uh, Silex, or is these the torpedoes that launch directly from the ship? These ones are the torpedoes that strung underneath the, uh, yeah. the cruise missile. Roger, right, so it is part of the Silex. Okay, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, 60 kilo warhead, right. On s right, what's this next thing? On some loud indominal sharp, so that includes our one, our, our ship, the ZRK 4K3 OSA was replaced by the ZRK OSA MA, which is the 933, which is probably the one we're going to get, I imagine. Uh, Gecko, S A, surface to air N4, Gecko, okay. According to this thread, the OSA MA, OSA AK, but for the ships. Equals it's AK, but for the ships, yet sealed missiles that are under circular panels. Oh yeah, I haven't seen about that. Have we got any pictures of these oceans? Because that that suggests that if they're under sealed panels, that would suggest they're vertical launch, wouldn't it? I think what it is is that it has a container that opens up and then the arms come out. Okay, right, yeah, fine. Okay, we've got something about the Type 53 torpedoes here. A speed of 40 knots, up to 15 kilometers for the actual torpedo. Depth down to 400 meters. Payload 240, uh, so we've got the two different types, set 65 and, and the uh, 5365K. One is sonar guided and one is wake guided. What's the, do we know what the difference between those guidance systems are? Sonar is is that it's actively pinging out, like if you've ever seen the movie uh, The Hunt for the Red October and you hear that pinging from yeah. the torpedo. Mm -hmm. And uh, wake guided, what it does is that it swims back and forth between the wakes of the, uh, of the props and it homes in on ships that way roger cool right and that's the end of that and there's some more sources what we'll do now is jump in dcs we'll have a closer look at the model and we're going to fire some cool guns and stuff okay we're in game now and we're having a look at the res key so the first thing you'll notice is that it's a crap terrible model and that's because it's just one of the old models used by dcs it hasn't been updated it may do one day you know it's probably about 10 years old plus this model but um everything will work on it still so we're all good so let's go through it step by step at the front there you've got this chap here these are the four silex launchers so the cap will open the silex uh the ssn 14 will fire which is the torpedo being uh, carried by the little rocket ship above four of them next we've got the gecko so that is the two arm launcher i was talking about there's two arms there carrying one missile each they'll fire their payload of two missiles then the arm pops down gets reloaded probably automatically and then comes back out again so that's that then we've got the, uh, are they RBKs or RKU? I forget what these are. I it's RBK. Roger, so these are two sets of submarine mortar depth charge that we've got here. The standard on a lot of these Russian vessels. Next, we've got this little spinning guy here is our navigation radar. Sorry, I've forgotten the name of it, but that's our navigation radar there. Next, we've got our fire control radar for the SAA Gecko, and can I remember the name of it, Taishi? That would be Pop Group. That's the Pop Group, or the forward-facing Pop Group radar for this guy here, and what we'll probably see is that will track us, that will turn around and track us as we, as we fly by. Then we've got two antennae here, and these are for the Silex, aren't they? For the uh, antenna for the Silex system. Yep, them are eyeballs. Eyeball, they're, they're NATO eyeball. Okay. Let me just uh, curse it back. So then we've got a series of antennae here. For these are the uh, long range search. Do you want to go through? What, what's the front spinning one? The front spinning one is the Dawn antenna. And then the large one on top would be the, uh, the head net C. The head net. So that was the twin facing. Yeah, I remember that. Cool. Right, uh, next, going back, we've got the torpedoes. So they, these are the eight torpedoes. I, don't, I still don't know how actually they're launched. They may get, you know, kind of almost shot off to the side or something. I've never seen one being launched. But uh, there we go. Next, we've got a uh, pop-up here, a track for this guy here, which is the rear arm for the SA-8. Then we've got the blast. I can't remember its name. What's the um our, the the gun radar? A kite screech. Got the kite screech yep. here, which is the guidance for. If I can get this working for the two 100 mil guns at the back, which is going to be good fun to use. You'll notice the first one we've had where we don't have a helipad, and that's because 
there was uh, at least one type of subclass of Kivak that could uh, take a, a submarine based helicopter but this was not one of those hulls okay so all in all it's pretty well defended so we've got big anti-submarine missiles at the front we've got four times launchable uh, anti-air missiles rechargeable we've got lots of two racks of submarine depth charges submarine missiles in the middle uh, and two uh, anti-material guns at the back and what we'll probably find is those guns can actually shoot at anti-aircraft as anti-aircraft uh, AAA which will be pretty hardcore we'll see how that goes and whether that's modelled or not so that's that although it's not a very pretty model everything's there and it's all functional and ready to be used so anything you want to add to that Daishi any things of interest any sticky out bits that are any interest there um if you look all the way in the back I think that's where it drops the mines like right behind the other gun Right, do we think it's kind of got this that thing? Door. Yeah, right, so you'll just pop mines out. Right. Unfortunately, I can't below, go below the water level to see the screws, but uh, I should imagine they are there. Cool. Okay, well, the next thing we're going to do is drive the vessel out the land, and uh, we're, first of all, we're going to take down some land targets, I think will be the uh, thing to do, and showing you how to... So to control this ship, we need to be in either a game master or a tactical commander slot. Okay. And what we can do is click on the guy here, and we've got some very basic control. So if we want to move this guy, we're going to click Set Path. And we're going to click, um, left click over here. And say another waypoint there, and another waypoint there. And then right click to confirm the path. And we can choose the speed in miles per hour here. Not sure what's miles per hour. Probably because it's a ground vehicle, I suppose. And that is going to get on his way. Now, as with all ships in combined arms, it's very clunky. Uh, can often be difficult to use you just have to be patient with it so sometimes you'll find that you'll give it an order to sail somewhere and it just won't it'll just ignore you and you know it's just you just get used to it after a while if that's the case then delete its um, uh, uh, path and just add another path and it will probably work sometimes you have to do it two or three times but that's how it goes uh, so next I'm going to show you there's two ways of using our we've only got one weapon to attack ground targets and that's our big guns uh, but one annoying thing about that is it's going to be on the back of our ship so we can't shoot directly forward which is going to be a bit interesting and let's just see what our range is to these vehicles um, okay that's there well I'll just show you um, in fact what I'll do is just set the path I'm going to cancel this path here and set a new path so I'm going to click on our guy whoops uh, there waypoint there and waypoint there set path there see if we can get him to and what I'm going to do is trying to get him to turn basically speed up there we go so we've turned him sideways now so that we can try and use those guns over there so what I'm gonna do is now click uh, I can check his ROE to return fire fire or hold so I'm gonna go fire I'm gonna set it to red I don't need to set a state to red but I can and I'm gonna add, add a target this may or may not work because it may or may not be within range I'm just gonna add a, uh, a target there I can either click on the vehicle or somewhere in between there so I've added a target let's see if yep you see the guns are pointing now, because of reasons that I don't really understand, um, if you're a target in like this, it will fire only one shell, and it will take several minutes to fire that shell. That's just how this uh, kind of method works, and then those those guns will stop firing now. Now, because it's 10 miles, that is going to be a huge travel time for that shell, so we're going to have to wait while that shell comes down. I'm just going to scroll that forward, and hopefully that shell will pop down at some point. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. I think the reason it does that, it's trying to simulate like how you guys would be playing Arma 3 and you'd say, I need three shells on this target. I mm -hmm. think that's what's trying to simulate. Yeah, Roger. So you, it doesn't just go full auto. It will just do one shell for each attack. Roger. Uh, yeah, I've got that. And you can see it's giving us our one shell there. Terribly inaccurate at this point because we're 10 miles. We're right at the max ballistic range of the missile So that's one way of using it the next way of using it is the auto method And so what I'm going to do is just set another mission up for that stand by okay blue game master So what we've got this time is uh, We've got a bunch of vehicles here and what we're going to do is rather than target them We're going to leave it for, to auto fire So if we have his ROE on fire and his state as red it can probably be green but we'll turn it to red just to make sure he is prepared for battle then uh, he is going to see these hostiles here himself as long as they're within visual which is about 10 miles or something like that he'll start shooting them himself it may even be further than 10 miles i've, I've not thoroughly tested it um, it'll take two or three minutes until he starts firing because he has to do all the pretend preparation for battle stations um and that's it so let's get him over there 
Oh! So in this case, the Abrams are shooting back at him. So he's going to have to do it rather quick. Looks like no damage model again. Oh, it's smoking. Oh. It's smoking. Oh, I stand corrected. Ooh, what's going to happen? So those Abrams are completely nailing the ship look with their, the, no, the challengers with 120 mil rifle barrels and we might not even have fire control at this point. Now it's in the back, they haven't hit it yet, I think we might be... Come on, fire! I want you to fight! One thing to note is that they're scoring a lot of hits, but they're just kind of setting it on fire. They're not really breaking oh. a whole lot. Roger. I just realized my track IR is not working. Let me just get that set up. Come on, Big Bertha. I want you to start firing. Oh, I... We are on fire. I wish I brought my... I wish I brought my marshmallows. We are properly on fire, right. So, that's not worked. What we need to do is um, take him a bit further out to sea, I think, out of those Abrams range. Because those Abrams have just neutralized us completely. Yeah, I think she could still fire, it's just not in the right spot. She stopped, she's out, she's out. Oh, wow. Wow, so, okay, if you've got a uh, platoon of um, Abrams, uh, sorry, Challengers, British, that's why. Um, then you will absolutely neutralize. Oh, look, the massive hole they've blown in it. Terrible graphics, but that is quite cool. They've got that. Yeah, right. that's, uh, that's, that would be a pretty big flooding right there. Roger. Right, well, well that didn't quite go as expected, so let's um, change the tables up a bit. We've put him a few miles out now, so we should be out of range of those nasty little challenges. Put him red. Um, he'd, it'll take him a while to fire because... Um, uh, he needs to get to battle stations, which can take some time. Right. Uh, oh, what's going on? I heard guns, and it. Okay, that was just weird. What's going on? Oh, the bloody tanks are firing again. Well, they're supposed to be out of range, but. It's... They are very persistent. <laughs> yep. And accurate. I told you, it's the challenges. Fire back, mate, for God's sake. Use the boat. Ah, it's blown up again. Right. Okay. What, we're three miles out now. A challenger cannot fire three miles. Oh! Oh, we're getting hit again. Those tanks! I don't think we're going to be able to shoot these guys. Right, well, we'll just have to take the tanks away. You watch those fucking machine guns will kill it now. Oh, finally! Jesus, as soon as the tanks have gone, he wants to fight. Boom, boom! Boom, boom! Boom, boom! This is like a giant, like, uh, squeegee of these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, shows that he can do um, uh, ground to ground in terms of land as long as there's no challenger two tanks there right next thing is we're going to make him have a boat attack so stand by as we set the boat attack up hey also another fun thing about the uh, about this class um, somewhere around the 19th it was uh, there was the US was doing like it's almost like a right away for like maritime but for ships as long as you don't do anything military related Mm -hmm. And uh, this little guy was ramming itself up against a Ticonderoga. <laughs> That's funny. 
Okay, we've got our red ski now, and it's against the contemporary. It's against the Oliver Hazard Perry, which is a real belter of a boat, really. Much more modern, I think it was. And um, it's got harpoons. Got anti this is, uh, uh, you know, it's an anti-ship frigate. It can kill ships, whereas the red ski is not an anti-ship frigate. So we're just going to have to see how it goes. We think the Oliver Hazard Perry may whip its butt here. So let's speed that up. They're going to start finding each other 25 to 30 miles, usually when they see each other over the horizon. We're pretty sure the Silex on the Reski can't be used against ships. So. Uh, if it's the if it's the rest rope version, then it should. If they have it modeled. Yeah. That's the first harpoon out from the Oliver has a Perry. You see, it's with that uh, Mark 17 launcher there, or 17 or 13, I can't remember. I think it's 13. 13. Alright, so that's there. Can The question now is, can the Revskis, um, let me click on them here, can the pop-up radar and the SA-8 Gecko missiles shoot them down? There's one way to find out. Not going to fire. They're not going to fire. They can't shoot down harpoons. Harpoons are too low, the looks of it. So, this fight is going to be over before it started. There's no Sea Wiz. This is before the days of Sea Wiz. Boom! I don't think it's going to outright kill it. It should soften it up pretty good for fun. Um, what well, is, unless it just blew up the radar. Yeah, there's a good chance it has blown up the, um... Height screech, I guess we'll see what happens. So it's just gonna, well, it's pretty obvious, it's gonna, just gonna keep pummeling and it's not gonna fire back. It's a way out of range of the gun. Pew! Pew! Oh, that's killed it. That fourth harpoon has killed it. Oh, it's still firing, it's still firing. Range. So I'm trying to get them broadside, but it's just kind of hard. And it stopped and it's dead. So, uh, a mo much more modern hazard, Oliver Hazard Perry class, literally destroyed it without even any fitting. But, we ask, what if the Oliver Hazard Perry could only use guns? Let's give that. Okay, I was trying to make the Oliver Hazard Perry uh, fire with guns only, but I don't think we're going to be able to do it. So, normally we won't be able to get a win for the red ski, but that's kind of realistic, really. It's 1970s tech. It doesn't have the ability to defend itself against missiles back then. So, uh, we've got nothing bad enough to, to fight against it, basically. So I'm certain uh, that, the, that those rest rubs would have been being used, because I, there was only a couple of them of this class that had that upgrade. But it looked to me that was the reason why they chose this. Yeah, but strange but that's what it is right uh yeah we've had another go the only thing we can get this to fight against that it might be able to beat is itself we think so we're just gonna uh, try that i wonder where the gun range is about 17 clicks isn't it so got a way to go as yet oh guns are firing boom boom blue versus red red isn't firing why aren't you firing red blue is pacing him bow, bow, get some get some get some Still no return fire. I don't know why. I wonder if there's something up with just that chip. Oh, he's firing, he's firing now. Look, none of the bullets have landed yet. I <laughs> yeah, love that travel time. Love that travel time. Have Those bullets are going to be landed soon. They're landing! <laughs> That's fucking cool. Oh, here we go. And return fire. Oh, smoking! This was smoking. Yeah, I think it, this one's gonna go out first. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, pretty close now. Both are smoking now. Probably going to be about who, who's more accurate at this point. Yeah. Now. At least they've got plenty of ammo. I just wanted to think that I've always thought about uh, chips. It just, it just seems like they got hundreds of bullets ready to go for shells, I should say. The hit percentage is like 1% here. They're pretty inaccurate. Well, for sight fire, and it's like you can't see them anymore. <laughs> Radar guy did that radar should be able to nail them. Look at the small size of the smoke trap. EPA is probably not going to approve of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's out! It's dead! It's dead! It's dead! Finally! What a cool fight! I like these boats now. They're completely useless, but. Yeah, it's a shame the Rastrobe isn't firing. That's how he's knocked out. He's knocked out. Yeah, that's fair enough. Right, check the condition of the other guy. He's knocked out as well. They're both knocked out. Jesus Christ. Oh, let's have a check. No, technically they're both alive, but neither of them can actually do anything. Look, it's down to seven knots, that guy. Yeah, they're both pretty foobar. Right, anyway, um, I suppose that was quite cool. Let's try the anti-air. How old is the Ulysses compared to most other Sam's? It's not, like a really old 60s, one. 60s, 60s, yeah. It's one of the first that came out. Terrible missile. F-15, let's go and test out his Sam defenses. They are going to be pretty awful because they've got Osses, but Right, so we've got a uh, TP, which is a, is a top point. It's coming up as top plate. That's top. not right. Uh, what? What? Uh, should it be? I've completely forgotten. It should be like head net. Yeah, maybe. Well, so what kind of range is he going to shoot at? It's ages to go. Yeah. We got a missile at stop. Eight miles. Let's defeat the shit out of that. At least it's nice to see that I can shoot something. Roger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until the um, arm launchers are rearming, then I'm going to move forward. And then I'm going to dodge again as soon as he fires. Because that's got a good half a minute between arm launch, uh, arm uh, rearmaments, isn't it? That's on out. Hey, <laughs> you son of a fuck. I'm out of practice. Alright. Now, this radar won't be able to shoot up, I doubt, so. Oopsie. It's ready, Cap. Overshoot? Yeah. No! Hmm. I'm just gonna do a battle one. I'm just gonna 
see if I can come back down on top of him. Yeah, so you can't get a lock when I'm kind of this kind of angle. Well, maybe you can. Maybe you can. Stand by. No, it's just my RWR playing up. Got another missile out. Well, it's, it's pretty formidable. I'm not sure I could get close to that thing, legitimately. Unless I was going really low. So another thing I think I'll quickly check is um, if I can ingress on it really low. So let's kind of have a go at that. Maybe that's why I couldn't get the hard Yeah, I think it, it's... it's because low stuff just wasn't really... I won't get a lock on me. Yep, there we go. So let's go down. Come on, fire at me. So, watch this. Oh, I can't go much lower. I can't go much lower. Yay! Just did low enough. You gotta go really low, but you can get below it. Oh, that explains everything then. Yeah. Right, so yeah, I mean, it's. yeah. Fuck you! Right, so you can get below it. Um, that's what it is. Anything you want to add on uh, the Red Ski, Daiichi? It's pretty. It's an alright boat for the 17th, yeah, I suppose. I've, I've just found it so fascinating when I was reading about it. It just felt like that this ship was. The response to all of the submarine action mm -hmm. that the United States was doing at that point, and exactly you just look at all the submarine. sonars, and yeah, it's just yeah. like just all of the everything. Beast, right? All right, thank you for doing that, Daishi. Uh, we'll get planning on the next boat. Hope you enjoyed that at home, and see you later.